Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial. In this one, we need to talk about the arpeggiator. I've already made a tutorial about this one, like two years ago, and it had some update updates. So I much prefer to kind of cover this again with all the updates included. So I have a single node right here. You know, it's just a clip with playing a single node and sustaining it. So what I want to do, I want to do a little bit of arpeggiation with it. So I'm gonna bring the arpeggiator and put it in front of the synthesizer. And we're gonna instantly get that kind of an arpeggiator. That is, I'm not doing a lot of a lot of release, and this is gonna be handy in a minute. So right from the start, you get it. And of course, on each one, we are doing 16 notes because it's one 16. So if you want to do less, yeah, right here you can change the time. You know, the rate, or you can go super fast. In this case, I'm gonna keep 16 because, you know, it just sounds, sounds cool. Now, of course, you can go and do dotted notes, or you can even go and do triplets. Right, but the main thing, you know, it's that we want to create some kind of a movement or some kind of a arpeggiation. So you have two options right here, and you actually have three. So let me just lower the volume a little bit. So you can do the velocity, for example. This one is going to, on each step, is gonna play with the velocity that we have right here. So you need to make sure that you have velocity enabled right here. Is this all the way down? Nothing is gonna happen. So we need to have something right there on your synthesizer. So what we can do, we can start messing with this and some notes are gonna have higher, you know, higher value for the velocity. And some other ones are gonna be low. So we start getting that, you know, kind of a sequence sound. So then you have the gate, you know, this mess with the velocity. So then you have the gate. Now, if you have a long release on your synthesizer and you go low on the gate, nothing is gonna, nothing is gonna happen. You're not gonna get much. But the gate pretty much is gonna make the notes shorter or longer. It just is gonna mess with the length of the note. If you go all the way down, pretty much, you're gonna skip that note. And now, you know, we're just getting in a more, just, you know, nicer territory, just messing with the velocity and the gate. Now, if you want to skip notes, instead of just going all the way down with the gate, you have a, you have a, right here, a section, or you can skip that note, and it will just skip that note. Now notice that it's not going through that note, it's just jumping to the next one. That's why the loop restarts right here, even though we are doing 16. You always need to remember that. Now, what happens if you want to maybe do all at once? So I'm gonna go there, let me just stop it for now, and I'm gonna double click, and when you double click, you go back to default. So what I want to do, I want to change the length of all the notes. So this is the global control. If I go down, all the notes are very short. And if you mess with this and you have all the notes, you know, kind of a very short, going the opposite way, it's just gonna make them longer. So the velocity works the same way. If you go down, you're going down in all. It's a global control. That's pretty much what it is. So I'm gonna go down on the velocity a little bit. So then of course you have other options right here. So notice that it says, you get the icon right here. So this is the rate. So when you click it, it means when it's light, it, you know, it's on, you get uh, to select the rate in, you know, in this kind of a time base. But the thing is that if you don't want to do this, you can do milliseconds. You can go manually on that one with just milliseconds. Right, so I'm gonna go there. So then you have the retrigger, and for this one, I'm gonna need to change uh, something to show you what it does. So right now we are just playing a single note and it lasts pretty much the whole thing. And then we are doing a new one, a new one, and a new one. So this one will restart the cycle when you uh, when it's receiving a new note. When we play a new note, we get a new MIDI note, or we play something, a new key, is restarting back from zero. And right now, this is the default behavior. Now the thing is that we are doing 16 steps, so the cycle 
is always the same when we play new notes, right? So, so I'm gonna make it shorter, gonna make it kind of a odd, something like that. So we know that, you know, it's, it's not, whenever the cycle is complete, it's not really complete because we need 16 steps to be complete. Now, if I, and notice that the retrigger is gonna go all the way this, then follow this, and when we play a new note, it's starting from the beginning, right? It's like doing that movement, going back and forward, because it starts from the beginning. If we disable this, it's not gonna do that. It's gonna just go in a straight fashion, just, you know, direct, straight line. And this, is, of course, depends on what you want to do. Maybe you don't want that, you know, looping back to whenever you receive a new note. You want a constant flow. So you just disable the retrigger and that's it. So the other thing is gonna be the octave. So if I go right here and go to two, notice we are playing a single note. So this means that the first note is gonna be the original note and the next one is gonna be one octave higher. That's why it's two octaves. You get the or original octave and then, you know, one octave higher. And you get that, you know, you get that. You can go three octaves and I'm gonna go to 16 steps for now. And now we are doing three. Whenever we go to the step number one, it's gonna be the original one. The next one, this step, for example, is gonna be one octave higher. And then this one is gonna be three octaves higher, or maybe two, you know, we have three octaves. Let me start from the beginning. The next one, we have four, we can do the same thing. And we can do up to four octaves. Right. So you cannot argue that right now the sound is just very dull, right? We are just playing one single thing. So it would be cool if we create kind of an arpeggiator. Uh, and we can, we can create a real arp. And we can. Right here you get the transposition. So if I play something and I move this up or, you know, whatever, we are just, you know, creating that vibe. You just On each step we are just transposing that note or that step to a different key. So, for example, uh, right now, I'm just gonna start from the scratch, right? I'm just gonna start from the scratch. So what I want to do, since we are playing a single note, I'm just gonna go one, it's gonna be the root note, and then I'm gonna do maybe this one is gonna be three up, this one is gonna be seven up, and this one is gonna be 10 up. And we're gonna get, yeah. This one I'm gonna leave it like that, and then maybe I'm gonna go up uh, one full, you know, and then I'm gonna go down and like, you know, you just can play around with this. And I want to do in just going 12 semitones, 12 uh, semitones because it's just, you know, an octave down. And then we can start again. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So right here we can start with the same thing or maybe do something different. In this case, I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna do three. So we can, you know, create something nice, something that, you know, listenable. And then I'm gonna do the same, but maybe I'm gonna finish it on a different, on a different way. I'm gonna do 12, I'm gonna do minus 12, and then I'm gonna maybe go up in 12. All right. And there you go, you have an ARP. Right, so you have one more control that we didn't uh, we didn't talk. We're gonna talk about this one, but we're gonna go to chords. Uh, on this one, you get the groove control. So if you don't know what groove is, right here you can enable the groove and you can get that shuffle, kind of a movement. Since we are doing 16s, now on this clip, we are gonna get that shuffle, kind of a... <laughs> we get that shuffle, kind of a sound. Yeah. If you disable this, it's not gonna listen to it. It's just a shuffle. So, okay, so let's move on to the next example. So this one is gonna be the chords. I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna turn this off, and we have just one, two, three, and four. Cool, all right. And there we go in a loop. So we are playing just three notes. So what do we want to do? We want to create an arpeggio based on these three notes, and you're gonna get that automatically from the arpeggiator. Let me just bring a fresh one. So I'm gonna play it. There you go. You don't need to do anything. Just drop the default and that's it. Now, of course, you can still do the transposition. You can still do the velocity. You can still do the gate. Right? 
You can still go right here and skip steps. It's not gonna do much, but it's gonna skip steps, but that's fine. Now, the main core right here is gonna be, of course, the timing, but it's gonna be what you can do because right now it's going three up and one down. But we can go up, and it's gonna go from low and up, and it's gonna go down. And you get different motions. Up and down, different variations. Now, with some arpeggiators, you don't get a lot of options, but with this one, you do get some other options right here that are just, you know, different. Now, right now, of course, we are going one note, one per note. So uh, let's say if I go and select, you know, up, is playing, if I go to the clip, this one first, then this, and then this, and then repeats. Now, what if we want to do pretty much the same thing we've been doing with this, with a single note, with, with the chord? So this is the chord. So each step is going to play this chord. Maybe lower velocity. And you can still transpose. <laughs> So again, if you want to do that chord kind of a, you know, kind of a thing, you get it right there. So you can uh, do random, of course, as well. This is going to give you that random pattern. And then you have something called flow. And I'm going to explain it in a minute. That's my phone again. I just thought I silenced it. Okay, so notice that, of course, how many notes you play or what you do depends on the chords. So right now we are doing a triad, but of course, everything is going to get a bit more complex when you add a new note. In this one, we are doing four notes. You notice that the arpeggio changes. And the only thing I'm doing, I'm just adding the same note right here, a lower note. But now we have four, we don't have three, so the arpeggio changes. You need to be aware of this. Because the length is not going to be the same. Same thing is we do more. Let's say we do five this time. I'm doing random. Let me just do something more predictable. What is it changes? It's just different. If I go to this one, which is just four, it's just different. So always make sure that you check whatever it is that you're doing right here, because maybe you just want to remove some notes. All right, pretty simple, very straightforward. Then you get that flow option that you get right here. And it says, same order as user played the notes. So I'm gonna go right here uh, to the flow. So this is the final example. This is what we are going to rec re recreate. So what I want to do, I want to play a note. And the flow option uh, right here, the flow. So on this one, I'm starting playing a note. Then I'm gonna play a note up. Then I'm gonna play, play down. Then I'm gonna go up and then I'm gonna go down. So I'm adding notes as we go, but I'm going up then down and up and down. I'm following that pattern. I'm not going, you know, um, on a straight line when I play, play one note, then go up and then go up and then go up. That would be very simple. So the trick right here is that I want to record this because this, uh, this is going to recognize this and it's going to, you know, pretty much follow it. All right. So I'm going to go and play it and I'm going to record whatever we have right here. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to do record and I'm going to do something like, I don't know, that. So now I'm playing one note. Now remember, this is going to remember. Now I'm going up. Now instead of going up, I'm going to go down. And notice it's, it's doing that motion. It's remembering. If I go up, it's doing that motion again. If I go down, notice it remembers the order of, uh, of the notes I played. And it's doing that arpeggio. All right, so that, that's, that's what the flow means. Right? You're creating kind of a, your own motion right here, your own pattern. So this is the most common kind of a usage of an arpeggiator, of the arpeggiator. Just use it to, you know, to do something like this, or maybe just to do some chords, or maybe just to use the flow, just to, you know, to create your own arpeggios. Now, then you have a more creative kind of a way. So I'm going to go here to this track, and this calls, uh, <clears throat> this is creative. 
uh, because you're going to do something creative. So I'm going to, of course, mute this one. Just going to go down, going to disable this, going to go there. So this is the sound, right? And it's a pretty dull sound. So we can actually, we can make it a little bit better. Now, all the synthesizer on the synthesizers on Bidwick, they have a note, uh, kind of a placement right here, a note, kind of a feature. So since the arpeggiator is going to kind of generate a note, if you throw this right here, it's going to modify how this works. Notice this, it sounds a little bit different. It's like putting this in front. And maybe you're asking, what is the difference? Well, the thing is that now, if you do something special with the arpeggiator, you can save a patch uh, with a pulse synth, for example. Now, what I want to do, I want to play with the velocity. I want to do something like, something like that. Right? Now, the synthesizer has an expression right here. And it's listening, notice that it's listening to the velocity. I already did this behind the scenes, so we can save some time. So the velocity, it's listening to this velocity we are modifying right here. And the velocity is modulating the cutoff, the resonance, and the pitch. And we get that kind of a sound. Let me go higher. And all this motion comes from the arpeggiator. If I disable it and press a key, we don't get that motion. All that movement comes from the velocity of the arpeggiator. So we can use it as a modulation device if we wanted to. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much, you know, the arpeggiator. Hopefully you learned it, you know how to use it, and now you can use it on your own productions and create your own patches. And uh, hopefully you like this. Remember to like and subscribe. And remember to check Patreon, huh? you know, to keep the lights on on this channel. So, see you on the next one.